Hey gang, with House of Wolves in full swing, I've decided to put together a guide on how to do well in the Trials of Osiris. This is a great game type, I love playing it, but it's pretty competitive, and I know there are some people out there that have been having a little bit of trouble getting to the Lighthouse, the special area that you can get with a 9-0 record. This guide is designed to help you do better in Trials and help get you to that Lighthouse if you haven't been already. Okay, here we go. Part 1. Be prepared. And that starts with weapons and armor. Obviously you want to go in with maxed out gear. Armor that gets you to level 34, and weapons that are at damage 365. You can go in and still win without being a level 34, but it's always a better idea to be max level. So while any armor that gets you to level 34 is good, in my opinion you almost need to be wearing the Crest of Alpha Lupi for the Hunter or Titan, and the Light Beyond Nemesis for the Warlock. As you hopefully already know, these pieces of armor have a perk that allows you to revive teammates faster and be revived faster, and reviving teammates is a big part of winning in Trials of Osiris. Keep in mind that the revive bonus on both Alpha Lupi and Light Beyond Nemesis does not stack, meaning that only two-thirds of your team actually need to be wearing the armor. Anything else is overkill. With two-thirds of your team equipped with Lupi, everyone on your team is guaranteed the revive bonus, no matter who is reviving who. This gives one person on your team the freedom to wear a different piece of exotic armor, while ensuring that everyone in the group gets the benefit of a faster revive. The difference in revive speed from Lupi or Nemesis allows you to do drive-by revives, aka running by your teammate without stopping and just holding down the revive button. You'll pick them up as you run by, which is really helpful, and it's something that won't work if you or your teammate aren't equipped with Revive Boost Armor. For weapons, I recommend what I'm referring to as the Holy Trinity. The Last Word, Thorn, and Red Death. These weapons are very good in PvP, and you can bet money that any good enemy team you fight will probably be using them. For your special weapon, anything can work fine, but I recommend using a sniper. Snipers with high enough impact can one-hit kill enemies through their temporary health buff when they're revived, and that is really helpful in keeping the enemy pinned down. Check the link in the description of this video for a database on Planet Destiny that has all snipers listed by impact. It's pretty helpful. Any sniper with impact in the 30 range is strong enough to immediately headshot kill on a revive. Try and grab one of those guns if you can. Here's another way to be prepared. When the game starts, quickly go to the menu and take a look at your opponents. What class are they? What armor are they wearing? What weapons are they using? And what perks do their weapons have? Finding out can help you figure out right away how your enemy is probably going to fight you. You should be doing this before every game. And the last part of being prepared. Always expect that your enemy will use effective strategies against you, because they will. I promise you. Blink shotgun. Final round sniping. Proximity rocket launchers like Truth and Gallarhorn. Sunsinger reviving. And using the Holy Trinity. You need to expect going in that your enemy will be doing any of these things so that you don't get caught off guard when they do. Part 2. In-game tactics. First and foremost, control the map. It's important to be relatively near your teammates, but don't cluster together to the point where you can all be killed by one well-thrown grenade. Your goal should be to try and effectively spread out little by little and pin down the other team from more than one direction. This means that when the round starts, get moving. If you all stay on your spawn and let the enemy completely come to you, it's pretty likely that your entire team is going to get fenced in and killed. While you're trying to control the map, make sure you're also controlling the special ammo, including when the round is over. When the round ends, don't just sit there and dance. Run to the nearest special ammo crate and grab it before the timer ends the round. Every extra little bit of ammo helps, and you should be trying to do this at the end of every round. Next, be near your enemy's dead bodies and guard them. Really important. You can lose a game very quickly by not paying attention to an enemy's body and letting them get revived. Make it harder for your enemies to revive each other by dropping grenades on or near their ghost or just staying in the general area. If you have a numerical advantage, aka you outnumber the team 3 to 1, by all means attack together if you think you can get the kill, but remember two very important things. 
1. Don't completely abandon your enemy's dead bodies. I've won matches by having an entire team chase me in a big circle around the map so I could loop back and revive my teammates that they were no longer guarding. The last thing you want is for them to revive one another and for you to lose your number advantage. And number two, remember, your team has the upper hand, and if you want, you can make them come to you. Three on one is a huge advantage, and rounds are only two minutes long. By guarding their team's bodies and playing the clock, you're forcing their hand. If they wait too long, the control zone will appear, which you should easily be able to take in a three on one. No matter what, guard the bodies and don't lose your number advantage. Know when to revive and when not to revive. Yes, reviving is hugely important, and your goal should always be to revive your teammates, but you need to be careful when doing it. If the enemy team is staring at your teammates ghost from across the map with a sniper, now is probably not the best time to revive them, because as soon as you try, you'll both get picked off, and now your revive timers will be even longer. Try and put pressure on the enemy team with grenades or cover fire to make reviving teammates easier. If the enemy team has a Sunsinger, expect for them to, at some point, self-revive during the game. Make sure that when that happens, you can call it out to your teammates immediately so you can shut them down as a group. If you have a good lead, it might be worthwhile to hang on to your super so you can easily take down a Sunsinger that has revived. Nova Bomb, Fist of Havoc, and the Golden Gun all work great. If you are playing a Sunsinger and want to revive, use it wisely. If your enemies are smart, they're probably expecting you to revive at some point and will most likely see it coming. Don't revive into a bad situation, like at the very end of a losing round, especially if all your enemies are alive because they're going to gang up on you and you'll end up wasting your super. Use it in situations where your teammates are still alive and have the enemy distracted. It requires a little bit of patience, but sometimes the payoff can be huge. Moving on to the heavy ammo. The heavy ammo pops up when one team has won three rounds. Right before the heavy ammo round begins, you have a window of a couple seconds to switch to an exotic rocket launcher like Truth or Gallarhorn. I do this almost every time. When getting the heavy ammo, be smart. Don't stand directly on top of the heavy staring at it during the timer because you could get rushed and killed by the other team while not paying attention. Don't run directly at the heavy with no defense plan at all. Use a sniper, some grenades, or any other form of cover fire to put pressure on the enemy team and then get the heavy ammo. And part three, communicate and use callouts. This is the most important thing you can do, really. You and your teammates need to be telling each other constantly where the enemy team is and where they're going. Did you just see an enemy? How many? Where on the map? Are they pushing? Running away? Reviving? Tell your teammates. It's so easy to do and it makes such a big difference. The team that communicates more is the team that wins more. This means that you need to have some kind of callouts for the map that you're playing on. Saying things like, they're over here or they're over there are bad callouts because A, your teammates won't know right away where here or there are and B, you're not calling out how many enemies there are, or what they're doing. I know it can be a little intimidating for teams that have never done it before, but it's not that hard to make up your own callouts if you need to. Here, look at this. This is a terrible map layout that I made in paint in about two minutes for Pantheon. Here are the callouts that my teammates and I ended up using. Are they the callouts that everyone else uses? Who cares? The only thing that matters is that when you call something out, your teammates know exactly where you're referring to. Let's say we're playing a match. I'm here, and my teammates are around here. One of them calls out something like, There's two pushing down our middle hallway with shotguns. That is a good call out. By saying that, I now know exactly where the two enemies are. I know what direction they're going, and what weapons they have. Now I can turn my attention that way and help out my teammate. And by the way, just because you're dead doesn't mean that you should stop communicating. You need to tell your teammates if it's a good time to revive you or not. If you see someone on the other team staring at your ghost with a sniper, tell them to wait until they're no longer watching, otherwise you might both get killed. 
Also, when you're dead, your camera will follow the person who killed you, and you'll be able to tell your teammates where they are at all times. Alright gang, that's it for now. If you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I'm always working on more content, and follow me on Twitter if you want to chat. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you at the lighthouse. Thank you.